Greetings, boils and ghouls, and welcome to yet another One Hit Wonderland Spooktacular Edition. Yes, I do still have requests to do what they are on hold because it's Halloween! Couldn't do this last year because I thought I had run out of ideas. There aren't very many Halloween themed One Hit Wonders. There are, of course, horror themed bands, but they tend to be no hit wonders. But one of my fans on Twitter, thank you, at Doc Scotticus, they actually did find one for me. A serious, no shit, devil worshipping band dating back to the dawn of heavy metal. That's right, one of the original shock rock bands, Coven. Yes, today we are covering a full on witchcraft themed band who would hold actual satanic masses on stage. And fronted by a woman, which is rare even now, let alone back in the late 60s. Cool, right? Now, Coven is a pretty obscure band, and in fact, this is literally the only video footage I could find of them. There's just not a lot out there. I had to dig pretty hard for this one. But back in 1971, they did actually manage to creep into the top 40 with a song about one of metal's favorite subjects, WAR! I mean, who needs ghouls and goblins when the real world provides such terrors on its own, right? From Sabbath to Slayer, from Iron Maiden to System of a Down, the real-life horrors of war have always inspired metal's darkest, bloodiest, most chilling music. So put on your face paint, light some candles, draw a pentagram on the floor, and prepare to get your faces rocked on this Devil's Night as we listen to Coven's biggest hit, one, ten, soldier! Listen, children, to a story that was written long ago About a kingdom on a mountain and a valley for below What is this? What, what am I listening to? God has your neighbor What, this isn't metal. This, this is this is folk protest hippie shit. What it, it, is this a cartoon? Is this from a kids show? Where's the blood? Where's the devil worship? On the bloody morning after, one tin soldier rides away. Happy Halloween. Why can't I have this one thing? That's all I ask for. One. Listen, children, to my story. It was written long ago about an awesome band named Coven, formed in the late 60s in Chicago. She cuts a man's heart, making deep shells. Again, this is the only video footage of Coven I could find, so please ignore the shitty quality. This is their first single, Wicked Woman, and it comes from their debut album, Witchcraft Destroys Minds and Reaps Souls which is A, awesome, and B, happily serves as its own moral panic warning. It's like they were trying to come up with the title for their own Jack Chick tract. Now, I've been calling Coven metal. They were certainly a precursor to metal, but that's not really the word for them. They were more of a heavy psychedelic band, like Jefferson Airplane, if they were really into goat sacrifice. But while they predate metal, they didn't really like the psychedelic label either. Cause you know, that's that's flower child music. Do Coven look like a bunch of peace-loving hippies? <laughs> Please, they would never, ever. Speaking of metal, you wanna know what the first song is off that album? Look at this. Black Sabbath. Well, that sounds familiar. You know who else had a song named Black Sabbath? Black Sabbath! Most of what I know about Coven comes from people researching the origin of Black Sabbath, because, well, geez, you know, Coven came out around the same time, they had a song called Black Sabbath. Get this, their bass player was named Oz Osborne. Also, Coven's Secretary of State was named Kennedy, and Sabbath's Secretary of State was named Lincoln. Eerie, right? Clearly, Sabbath were heavily influenced by Coven. Did you ever see this album before? Coven? No. This is a Chicago band, you never saw this before? No. This has no... 
For what it's worth, Coven's lead singer Jinx Dawson calls total bullshit on this. She says Sabbath must have clearly been aware of him. So the question is, why did Sabbath get huge, not Coven? I mean, Coven weren't nobodies. They toured with Alice Cooper and the Yardbirds, and they had a cult following that is... <laughs> cult following. But they did have a decent-sized fan following, and in fact, they still do. So, what happened? Well, the thing is, Sabbath was always pretty leery about associating themselves with any explicit satanic symbols. They wrote dark stuff, and sometimes their label would put satanic symbols on their album covers, but they, they weren't really a fan of that stuff. Coven, meanwhile, Coven went all in on the whole Satanism bit. Because this, this was not an act. Like most shock rock bands, it is an act. You, you know, even die-hard KISS fans know Gene Simmons isn't an actual fire-breathing demon. He's just, you know, ugly and a terrible person. But Coven were legit. They did, in fact, practice witchcraft. Jinx was actually raised in the occult. In fact, while the invention of the metal sign is usually credited to Ronnie James Dio, there's good evidence that the first person to throw up the horns was actually her. She says it was her society's secret sign, and then Jinx spread it everywhere, and her old friends were really mad at her, she says. But it turns out, Sabbath had the right idea keeping arms distance from full-on devil worship. For one, it means witchcraft didn't destroy their minds or reap their souls. Drugs did that. But more importantly, the occult would become a bit of a hot-button issue. Because, look, there was this guy, Charles Manson, and he... You probably know this story. And so after that, there were a bunch of panicky articles about Satanism, some of which mentioned Coven directly. So Mercury Records pulled all their albums off the shelves and, uh, well, they decided to push Coven in a bit of a different direction. <sighs> oh god, do we have to do this part? Okay, so, uh, there's this great, cheesy, kung fu hippie movie called Billy Jack. But seriously, it's great. It's about this half-Native American ex-Green Beret, played by a very, very not-Native American actor, and he kicks ass for the hippies who can't kick any ass for themselves. It's a hippie, peacenik action movie. And it was very obviously a huge influence on cinematic auteur Steven Seagal. Oh, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, Billy Jack there, he was also the director, he needed a singer for the soundtrack. Linda Ronstadt passed on it, but she referred Jinx to the project, and Jinx said, you know, why not? I don't think she was expecting this low-budget nothing movie to become one of the biggest hits of the year. Now, the song itself had been a minor hit a couple years earlier from the obscure Canadian band The Original Cast, seen here looking much creepier than Coven, honestly. This is a group of people who run a quaint hotel in the English countryside where they kill and eat their guests. Anyway, One Tin Soldier was the number one hit in Canada, placed in number 38 in America. And Coven's version, a couple years later, didn't get much higher, only number 26. But it's had a long shelf life. You may remember this song from Rob Perabonian's famous Pachelbel's Cannon Rant. Listen, children, to my story. It was written long ago. Yeah, that's a funny bit. Anyway, I don't have any footage of Coven singing it, but we do have this cartoon illustration that aired on the Sonny and Cher show. So, let's take a listen. Listen, children, to a story that was written long ago. Oh boy, story time. On the mountain was the treasure. Okay, so there's the mountain people and the valley people, and those greedy valley people want the mountain people's treasure. And the valley people swore they'd have it for the very I've always said this, you can't trust valley people. I know it's not politically correct to say, but valley people are greedy, filthy scum. Anyway. God had your neighbor, God had a cheat up around. We'll say this, I do actually like the chorus a lot. It's weird to describe such a flower power, earnest song like this, but the song's main asset is the chorus's bitter, angry sarcasm. Fine, just go ahead and be evil and awful, you stupid, violent hypocrites. Yeah, like in the 60s, really, for thousands of years, there are people who profess love of Jesus, the original hippie, but a version of Jesus who is totally cool with blowing people up. So, yeah, this attack on self-serving hypocrisy is just dead on. So the people of the valley sends a message up the hill, asking for the very treasure tons of gold. Well, 
that conflict was resolved pretty quickly. With our brothers, we will share. Oh. They rolled over real easy for those valley people, didn't they? Hmm. Hey, you know, I guess if you can afford it, go right ahead. I, I do think the horns take away from the vibe a bit. It's a, it's a little too Vegas, or, you know, a little too Jackson 5. I mean, if you're gonna be peace-loving folkies, then be that. But I do like the imagery of like, a single toy soldier being all that's left after we all kill each other. Now don't you feel bad. Yeah, the chorus of this is way stronger than the verses. Now the valley cried with anger, mount up your sword. Wait, 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 stop. What what just happened? Wait, didn't the mountain people give them the treasure? And they still got slaughtered. Why didn't that I feel like proper diplomatic communication could have prevented this. Or or maybe not, because valley people are just the worst people. And they killed the mountain. Back up! Their treasure was a stupid rock that said peace on earth? Was it like a valuable mineral of some kind? I think it was just a stupid rock! No, no, hold up on the hating your neighbor. I still have questions about the goddamn rock! Who was calling it a treasure? Was it the mountain people? Were they bragging about a treasure they didn't have? Was, was the treasure supposed to be the message? Peace on earth? Not much of a treasure, seeing as it didn't do the mountain people any good. Or at least they didn't spread the message very well. I mean, I guess there's peace on earth now, now that the mountain people are all dead. Look, none of that made any sense. Yeah, yeah it's supposed to be simple, like a fairy tale, but it, it doesn't work. Like, here's how it's supposed to work, look at the Lorax. The Lorax told me not to cut down trees, I cut down the trees anyway, and now there are no trees and I'm sad. See? Makes perfect sense. Are the valley people sad? I mean, at the very least, they have the mountain now. Do they f do they even feel bad? Do they lose their souls? They, they, they seem to be pure evil from the beginning. And for a song about how war is evil, all I can think of is the mountain people gave up like punks. Appeasement doesn't work. Fight to the death. They should have slaughtered those valley-dwelling barbarians like the filthy vermin they are. Screw them. I mean, that war could have easily been won by the mountain people. They had the high ground. The advantage was theirs. It's a stupid story. It's a stupid song for stupid drug-addled hippies. And you go from worshipping Satan to this? Oh jeez, wait a minute. Is this what happens when you sell your soul to the devil? You end up singing this for eternity. Oh man, spooky. This is the cover of their second album. Suffice to say, the Halloween portion of this video is over. I mean, look at this. What is this? I mean, okay, one-eyed cat, faceless band members, that's kind of cool, but the white background, the font, looks like a goddamn Carpenter's album. As for the actual failed follow-up song, I, I don't know exactly what it was. I mean, they put this album together after One Tin Soldier got big, but I think the only single was a re-release of One Tin Soldier, and this time with the full band playing on it, because the first time it was really just the Jinx solo. So, um, I, I don't know, I guess we'll just listen to the opening track. Yeah, yeah. This sounds like an Anne Murray song. We ain't got money, I'm so in love. And honestly, Coven had basically already broken up after their first album flopped, and Jinx had to put together an entirely new band to record a second album, which, you know, that explains a lot. Uh, let's see what else is on here. Um, they, they do a cover of Jailhouse Rock by Elvis Presley. It's a, it's a very meatloafy version. You know, which is fine, I like meatloaf. But after destroying mines with witchcraft, it really does feel like a letdown.
Well, let's see what their third album is. Blood on the Sn Oh yeah. Yeah, that's more like it. it even has a music video. <laughs> some music to sell your soul to. I am definitely feeling this. <sighs> Tragically, it did not save the band. When this album failed to sell, Coven called it quits. Um, not really. I mean, they tried reforming in the 80s as a new wave band called The Equalizers, and Jinx did a little acting and modeling. That's, that's about it. But when you're one of the pioneers of an entire genre, people tend to remember you. And since the 90s, Jinx has gotten a lot of attention as the original Queen of the Goths. Since then, she's reformed Coven off and on, and she even released some music this year. So, uh, check that out. Yeah. They were just too ahead of their time is what happened. You imagine if they had a career that was driven by this and, you know, not this. I just don't like this song. I mean, I mean, I like the chorus, but I, I, the verses kill it for me. It just wasn't what Coven were made to do. It was a fluke soundtrack hit from a fluke movie hit. Not what they should have been doing. Ah, what might have been. One tin demon rides away. 